Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan, Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining aphasia and covering four important things. Firstly, what is aphasia? Secondly, what causes it? Thirdly, the different types of aphasia? And finally, how it's diagnosed. I've also included lots of useful links to more resources in the description box of this video. And if you do enjoy the video and learn something new, I'd be really grateful if you could give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for new videos, which I release every Wednesday and every Sunday. So first of all, what is aphasia? Well, aphasia is a disorder that results from damage to portions of the brain that are responsible for language. For most people, these areas are on the left side of the brain. Aphasia usually occurs suddenly, often following a stroke or a head injury, but it may also develop slowly as a result of a brain tumour or progressive neurological disease. It's therefore important to note that aphasia is not a disease in of itself, but rather a constellation of symptoms concerning difficulties with expressing or comprehending language that could be due to multiple different underlying causes. So what causes aphasia? Well, as I've already briefly covered, aphasia is covered by damage to one or more language areas of the brain. Most often the cause of the brain injury is a stroke, and a stroke occurs when a blood clot or leaking or burst vessel cuts off blood flow to the part of the brain. Brain cells die when they don't receive enough of their normal supply of blood, which carries oxygen and other important nutrients. Other causes of brain injury are severe blows to the head, brain tumours, gunshot wounds, brain infections and progressive neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's disease. And these are just a couple of examples. So what different types of aphasia are there? Well, broadly, we can split aphasia down into two broad categories. The first is fluent and the second is non-fluent. But there are several types within these groups. Damage to the temporal lobe of the brain may result in something called Wernicke's aphasia, which is the most common type of fluent aphasia. So people with Wernicke's aphasia may speak in long, complicated sentences that seem to have no meaning. They can add in unnecessary words and they can even create made up words, which in medical terms is known as a neologism. So, for example, someone with Wernicke's aphasia may say something like, you know that Smoodle Pinkard, and then I want to get him around and take care of him like you want before. As a result, it's often difficult to follow what the person is trying to say. People with Wernicke's aphasia are often unaware of their spoken mistakes. Another hallmark of this type of aphasia is difficulty understanding speech. The most common type of non-fluent aphasia is something called a broker's aphasia. People with broker's aphasia have got damage that primarily affects the frontal lobe of the brain. They often have got a right-sided weakness or paralysis of the arm and leg because the frontal lobe is also important for motor movements. People with broker's aphasia may understand speech and know what they want to say, but they frequently speak in short phrases that are often produced with great effort. They often omit small words such as is, and, or the. For example, a person who's got broker's aphasia may say walk dog, meaning I will take the dog for a walk, or book book to table. For example, there are two books on the table. People with broker's aphasia typically understand the speech of others fairly well. Because of this, they're often aware of their difficulties and become easily frustrated. Another type of aphasia is global aphasia, and this results from damage to extensive portions of the language areas of the brain. Individuals who've got global aphasia have got severe communication difficulties and may be extremely limited in their ability to speak or comprehend language. They may be unable to say even a few words or may repeat the same words and phrases over and over again. They may have trouble understanding even simple words and sentences. There are other types of aphasia, each of which results from damage to different language areas within the brain. However, here I've just given you a brief overview of some of the common ones. Some people may have difficulty repeating words and sentences, even though they can understand them and can speak fluently. This is known as conduction aphasia. Others may have difficulty naming objects, even though they know what the object is and what it may be used for. That's a gnomic aphasia. Sometimes blood flow to the brain is temporarily interrupted and quickly restored. When this type of injury occurs, that's called a transient ischemic attack or a TIA. Language abilities may return in a few hours or a few days. 
So now let's move on and just have a quick discussion around how aphasia is diagnosed. Well, aphasia is usually first recognised by other people, so family members or the health professional caring for a patient. Most individuals will undergo a magnetic resonance imaging scan, known as an MRI scan, or a CT scan, which is computed tomography. This is basically a detailed scan using x-rays. And that's done to confirm the presence of a brain injury and to identify its precise location. The doctor typically also tests the person's ability to understand and produce language, such as following commands, answering questions, naming objects and carrying on a conversation. So if the doctor suspects aphasia, the patient is usually referred to a speech and language pathologist who performs a comprehensive examination of the person's communication abilities. If the speech and language therapist also has concerns, there's going to also be involvement of, or likely involvement of a neurologist who's a doctor who specializes in the brain. So I hope you found the video useful and you learned a little bit more about aphasia, some common causes and what it might mean for a patient. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for new videos, which are released every Wednesday and every Sunday. And if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and until next time, bye.